Hello and welcome to another episode of the F*** Face Podcast. This is number 182. With me, as always, Andrew Panton, and I'm reasonably certain Gavin's here somewhere as well. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, my you name is Jeff Ramsey. Hi, Jeff. Are you going to ask your fucking question? What's your fucking <laughs> question, Gavin? Well, I was waiting for you to stop saying hello to everyone. Well, well, just okay, just so, Jeff. so the band, uh, based on uh, band Blink-182, right? Yes. Yeah. Why is it that everyone in America says Blink-182, but for some reason I grew up calling it Blink-182? Like, is that just like all of my friends and me are idiots? Or? No, it's, it's, what, it's what everyone in England, I think England calls them Blink-182. Like, internationally, they are called that. Yeah. Why is that, though? Because it's not like it's... That is not the name of the band, but that is what they're called. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like when there's a different word or a different phrase, it kind of makes sense from a cultural point, I guess. But it's, it's the actual name of the band, though. There's only one right answer. Yeah, that is weird. Do you know why they're called Blink-182 or 182? I don't know. The band was originally called Blink. Their first album, Cheshire Cat, was actually released as Blink, but there was another existing band named Blink that sued them, and so they had to change their name. And I don't think they've ever definitively said why they picked 182, but I think the general wisdom is that it was a play off of the old Timothy Hutton movie, Turk 182. Mm. Uh, about a kid whose older brother, Fred Ward, uh, the adventure of Remo Williams, Fred Ward, was mm-hmm. a firefighter who uh, was drinking at a bar one night and a fire happened and he'd had like two beers, but he ran up and he saved a bunch of people. But in the process, he almost died and the city didn't want to pay his health coverage because he was off duty and drunk. And so Timothy Hutton became like a tagger and he went around tagging like slogans for his brother all around New York. And he was tagging uh, like uh, subway buses, subways, uh, trams. And then they tried to stop him. And it was like this whole fucking thing. And he would like, he like figured out a way to cut through. Like they, they, they introduced like ungraffitiable trains and he figured out a way to, to still uh, graffiti them. And it was like a whole, that was the whole movie. And I, I th- I'm pretty sure that's why they named the band Blink-182 or rename. How do you ungraffiti uh, or make a train ungraffitiable? It was supposed to be like some alloy. I don't remember. This movie came out in like 1985. I haven't seen it since then. But I remember it was some <laughs> sort of like alloy that was like resistant. You could just wipe it off or something. And so he brought a blowtorch and like cut through it and then oh, graffitied shit. under it. Yeah. Now that's extreme. That's not what I heard was the name. I heard that like growing up, they're from a city in San Diego called Poway. And uh the rival sort of like high school that uh, Tom DeLonge got kicked out of was Rancho Bernardo RB mm. and the 182 is 182 RB and that was it was like a fuck RB thing that's what i had always heard but i no idea i'm sure at some point uh they officially said where it came from so i'm sure the audience can uh i think i equally don't care yeah, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm with you, but I think that we just gave two different things and there's going to be someone online so mad that we gave two explanations and neither were right. Yeah, probably. Blink-182, uh, or Blink-182, as I call them, uh, recently released a new album and it has a song called <laughs> Face on it. And I've enjoyed that because when I've looked at, when you search <laughs> Face on YouTube, one of our episodes pulls up alongside of it, like a very specific one. And I've noticed it has continually gotten more views because so you think of it's that. like auto playing after the song. It's either <laughs> auto playing because it's only like a thirty second song, or people searching for the song and that one episode pulls up. <laughs> it has like thirty thousand views on YouTube. Um, it, it just which episode is it? I, I don't remember which one it is though. I wonder how many Blink One Eighty Two fans we've disappointed in the last two weeks. <laughs> So many. More than 182 of them. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Gavin, how are you feeling, buddy? You doing okay? Yeah, I got some air. Got a drink. Good, good. What we'll you see how it goes. <laughs> you doing all right as well? I'm doing pretty good. I'm a little cold. Actually, here, you know what? Um, one sec. <laughs> Just going to heat up for a minute. This is normal or what's happening? Yeah, can you hear anything? Can you hear no. anything? No. Really? Oh, that's great. You that's got, like, perfect. You're on or something? Uh, I'm in my bathtub right now. <laughs> I was just running some hot water. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean? We, are you? Uh, 
Are you nudie pooty in a bathroom right now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have been for the past two episodes. What? Oh, Nick actually did ask if you were in a different room. He did. Yeah. I was and we just about it. Brush past I it. draped uh, a, a, a blanket over my towel bar to try to reduce echo in the space. <laughs> so you're, uh, you're like in the tub with a roof? I'm, uh, no, it's like it's just draped over the side. So it looks like uh, what would be a uh, uh, like shower <laughs> curtain, essentially, but it's just a blanket and I have my shower curtain next to me. Here's the thing. I waxed my pubes two episodes ago. It's the mm -hmm. least comfortable I've been on the show. So I decided I deserve to be the most comfortable. So I've just been in the bath for the past two episodes. I just moved my setup over. How are you liking it? It's really cozy, and the fact that you guys can't hear the water running, although it might be in the recording. Well, of course it'll be oh, in the recording. I, yeah, it's definitely... Yeah, I could hear it there for a second, too, actually. Okay, well, then I should turn the water off. <laughs> well, you, we want no, you to be comfortable. Well, no, it's, it's good. I got a little bit more heat. Let me move the mic to see if I can get the sound of it a little bit more clearly. What are the chances Let's... he electrocutes himself before the end of this podcast? <laughs> Here's a question. Assuming that happens and Andrew dies... Yeah. Do we release this final episode? Uh, well, I feel, feel like he'd have to give pre-consent for that. Oh, yeah, I totally. Think, I think so. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and go on record as saying, if I die in an episode, this is my pre-approval for you to play that episode. <laughs> okay. So, see, I have, I have the laptop on the toilet next to me because it's level. Mm. I can reach all the buttons. <laughs> this camera... <laughs> So yeah, and also my but the battery on my camera is too low for my flash, so I don't have the best photos right now. This is me <laughs> looking through the setup to my bedroom. <laughs> this this camera is oh. making everything look real dingy. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, I it's dark in here. <laughs> I love that every year cameras get better and cheaper, and every year this podcast <laughs> Andrew's <laughs> images get worse. <laughs> I don't even know what that third picture is. What am I looking that's, at with that? Uh, that's uh, the, bathtub. The, the, the bathtub. Yeah, it's the water and the the, the faucet and the, the knobs that you twist. Why is the tap so far down? It's like halfway down the tub. No, that's where the water comes out. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a taller tub, I think we established. It's a, in other it's a tub where the, the overflow drain is halfway up it? No, you're looking at the wall. <laughs> That's the wall. There's oh. a cutoff. You see uh, the red bottle that I got stuck in my ass at one time <laughs> to the right yeah. of it? That's the top of the tub. That's where right, it cuts but off. the tap is halfway down. Yeah. And yeah. the overflow no, right. thing is also like you could never fill it up. No, to... the, the, the overflow is below the tap. Yeah, I see it. Okay. And so but how it much just... space is between that? Like, can you get fully submerged before the overflow kicks in? No, not at all. No. <laughs> No. What I'm saying is, if you clogged, if you plugged up the overflow, you could have a bath that's like twice as tall. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah before yeah, yeah, it overflows. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, you could. Yeah. I think you would enjoy baths more if you did that. I would. Yeah. I wish it was taller, to be completely honest. But I'm comfortable. You should consider getting uh, some gum or something to stick in there to, to close it up so you can experience a taller, a taller bath. We could get you some flex seal tape or something. Ooh, oh yeah, yeah, that would work. I was thinking about taping a roof on this setup, but I just I threw the blanket over instead. Well, threw a sounds... towel over the the shower. Yeah, it's not it, bad. It, it's the good toilet to me. seat. Is the toilet seat sturdy enough to hold that laptop? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's all good. It's like a little table, and it's level. It's perfect. It's nice. I am noticing that even though the seat is down, I can see into the toilet. Well, uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little off. I gotta reattach it. <laughs> Pops off every now and then, as they do. It, it yeah, pop offs do occur. <laughs> but I'm comfy. So this is the second episode uh, of a back to back, <laughs> and they always tend to be a little weirder. Uh, we've noticed. What is there anything you guys want to cover this episode? Is there anything you I want to talk about notes? the email that you wrote? Yeah, the chair. Oh update. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's hear about that. So Jeff, you wrote a wonderful email. Oh, really funny. You. Very great, sweet. great, just a great all around email. The the only problem with it, and it, it sort of appeared immediately in, in the replies I got, I reached out to a bunch of companies. I'd say 30 plus chair companies, and I'll continue to send out emails in this process. Um, a lot of people didn't know that I wanted a free chair 
Yeah, the email serf- serves as an icebreaker, it, or actually an ice melter, because when people read that email, they're immediately disarmed, and, and uh, it was crafted in such a way that they would uh, be completely opened up to the idea of initiating some sort of a relationship or conversation with you, and then at that point is when you like slide in the, I need a free chair. Yeah, so a lot of people just interpreted it as, uh, how many chairs do you want to order? Uh-huh. There was another <laughs> bucket of people that the response was, our chairs have a warranty. And that was okay. it. That was the, like, you're not, there's no challenge here. But on Monday or Tuesday, I th- uh, maybe Tuesday, I got an email. I'm not going to say this person's name or the company they work for. But I got, I got an email back from someone. And their response was, hi, Johnny. Ha, <laughs> you came to the right place. Professional sitters unite. Are you able to share who your client is? Let me know. Thanks. I freaked out. It was, yeah. you know, like in the dark night where it's like a dog chasing cars wouldn't know what to do if, if like they caught one. I mm-hmm. felt that. I never thought this would happen. It was phrased in such a perfect way. I immediately reached out to Gracie because I wanted you guys to have like a reaction in the moment. And I couldn't talk to anyone else about it on the show. Um, so I didn't know what to do. I went into full panic mode. Um, so what I did, <laughs> the first thing I thought is I need to create more time for myself to decide whatever it is I'm going to do. And so I replied to that email with, hi, it's so nice to hear from you. I'm sure my client is going to be thrilled to say that name. I thought you were going to say their name. <laughs> yeah, I got a blanket. Got it. Sorry, that was cute. <laughs> I was too relaxed in the tub. Please, <laughs> please bleep the name. <laughs> That's, you know, that's a dilemma with this tub life. I think I get it's like relaxed. truth serum for you. It might be. Yeah, this is a dangerous place for me to be. This can be dangerous for you, Andrew. It is. Yeah, this is, we're never doing this again. This is the last tub episode. Hey, what do you do at the marathon? Uh, I've already talked about that. All right. Anyway, email. It's so nice to hear from you. <laughs> I'm sure my client is going to be thrilled to know we shared enthusiasm for professional sinning. My client values privacy, so I must verify with them before disclosing who they are. What I can say is that they work in the <laughs> entertainment industry. I'm sure they won't have any issue with me disclosing who they are in, the, in this context, but I must confirm first. Thank you for your timely response and for your understanding. I will reach out again as soon as I hear back from my client. So that was phase one. Nice. <laughs> the second phase was I wanted to remove any connection Johnny Caviar had to this podcast so i googled it and the only thing that would pull up that was immediately related to us was one reddit thread about uh starfield a character and it. it was named caviar and it mentions johnny caviar so i reached out to that person and they were kind enough i wish i, I I'll, I'll credit them later i, I should have wrote their name down they deleted their post for me so now that didn't appear <laughs> oh my God. so it removed all connections <laughs> and then i thought i need to try to impress this person so and also I just think it's so funny the idea that like any any status I have makes no sense and is dumb. I wrote this really dumb tweet where it was the night the time changed over and I wasn't paying attention and I I didn't know if the time had gone back yet or if I was just still going forward and would go back later. And it was a real dilemma. I, I, I it was very jarring in that moment to not know what time it actually was. If it was truly one twelve. Or if we'd go back. So I, I quote tweeted that tweet and asked people to like it because I planned on sharing my Twitter account with this person. And I wanted the top tweet to be ridiculous and have as many likes as it could. To just look like it had larger numbers. And I was shocked by how many. Thank you so much to all the people that did that. It has like over 4,000 likes. It's ridiculous. It's so dumb <laughs> nice. that people. Yes. So I did all that. And then I waited until this morning. I gave like two days because I wanted to seem like Johnny Caviar is a busy man. His mm-hmm. client is doing stuff. So I, I replied today and I said, my apologies for my delayed response. After talking with my client, they are more than happy to have me share that they are none other than Andrew Pan. <laughs> if you're not familiar with his work, I will provide some links at the bottom of this email. He has set multiple world records in games such as Garfield Kart 2, as well as being a host on an award-winning podcast. 
<laughs> if you have any questions about my client, I would happily provide more info. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I'm hopeful we may further our professional sitters alliance into a chair sponsorship <laughs> for my client. I then linked the news story of when my local paper covered my Garfield cart <laughs> exploits, my world record setting, my Twitter account, and the Let's Play YouTube account. And that's where we're currently at with the Johnny Caviar, Your Letter Saga. I have not heard back. I suspect I won't hear back again from the person who will be bleeped. But I will keep you updated. I was shocked that at first, on the the first day I replied or sent it the next day, I had like three or four responses. Like, oh my God, this is way more than... I thought nobody was going to respond to this, even though it was How funny. How many did you send? Uh, probably like 35 at this point. Okay. Wow. And I went to like, the first thing I did was Google uh, notable chair brands and I found a list of the top 15 and I, I sent them all emails and then I just started like, I went for unconventional things as well of like, I don't really want a beanbag chair, but those are chairs. So I sent out a bunch to beanbag chair companies and I assumed that I would get replies from them because I feel like a beanbag chair is sort of a more chill thing and they'd be more open to this form of communication. Not a single reply. From Oof. any of the beanbag chair companies. <laughs> Nobody wanted part of that. Did you venture out of like desk chairs? Like, did you hit up Lazy Boy or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. They were part of the, the top 15, I believe. Lazy oh, wow. Boy. So I reached out to everyone that I could at that department. Um, Herman Miller, all, all brands. <laughs> and I'll continue to. Jesus. <laughs> Dude, if you could snag a free Herman Miller chair, that'd be pretty fucking fantastic. I, yeah, I don't think Herman Miller's going to want to partner with us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They might be Sounds a little like they don't trust their chairs. I don't think they want to be in the sponsorship uh, bucket with, uh, with, with, with the f*** guys. I don't hmm. think that's their brand. Well, maybe it should be. I'm going to keep at it. I'll keep you guys updated. I don't think I'm going to get a chair through this, but I'm enjoying the interactions. I'm appreciating having the Johnny Caviar email. That's just fun to have. I'm having a great time. Yeah, that's that email alone is going to pay dividends down the road. We've established, a, you know, uh, basically like a personal assistant for you, Andrew, that we can use uh, whenever appropriate. I think that's that's going to be a great resource for us down the road. And you're making connections. You may not. We yeah. may not end up with a chair today, but that bleeped person, who knows where they're going to work in the future? <laughs> you know what I mean? And if you, you left a, a caviar sized impression on them then uh, who knows what dividends it could pay down the road i'm hoping i'm hoping to leave caviar impressions everywhere i i have a question for the group what was the first thing that your parents could successfully bribe you with to get you to do what they wanted Ooh. oh oh by the way I, I really can i just say gav i really liked how you said you had a question and then you immediately asked the question uh yeah that uh, was good that was a much much improved from earlier this episode. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I would oh. say I was less an incentive kid and more terrified of getting yelled at. So as as a big, the countdown was very effective. If you don't do this by the time I get to to zero, three, two, like that would always get me. <laughs> I I liked to push boundaries. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. That reads so. I don't know that a lot of shit worked with me. Renting a video game from Blockbuster. Oh, that's good. Ooh, uh, that's, that's good. good. That's a good one. I was really, I was really into turnip roots when I was a kid. So my mom probably was able <laughs> to bribe me with turnip roots. What the fuck did what? What did you just say? What are you? Yeah. What are you? Gavin? It was like what's happening? It was like my favorite food when I was a kid was like a raw turnip root. Do you need some air? <laughs> no, that's just, that, is, that is what it is, dude. <laughs> that, is no amount of air is going to change my taste buds when I was six years old. What, what's the turnip root? Yeah, did you, did, just a turnip? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. You cut the ends off that, and you can just eat it like an apple. What? It's spicy. It's like a. It's spicy what? and crunchy. What? It's like eating a giant radish. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's kind of like eating a giant radish. I also really like radishes, and when I was a kid, that was like my favorite thing on earth. <laughs> And your so, mom would bribe you with them? I bet if she were to bribe me with stuff, that would have been what would have worked, yeah. Did you acquire your taste for them while riding down the river with, with Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? <laughs> no. But I can, I can genuinely, I mean, like, I feel like I can remember my mom being like, 
if you'll just <laughs> knock it off, I'll buy you a turnip root with, uh, uh, before we leave the grocery store. And I'll be like, okay. Do you remember the thrill of seeing your first horse carriage while enjoying a bite <laughs> of a turnip root? <laughs> Listen, I'm if I if I, I don't have to be honest with you guys. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> it is what it is. I when I was a kid, I grew up in fucking Alabama. I feel yeah. like we know that, right? Clearly. I yeah. hated Alabama for obvious reasons. In Alabama in 1982, a turnip root was like a Snickers bar to me. That's why I don't want to go yeah. back there. But it is what was, it is, man. I fucking loved turnip roots, and I I would love. Now that I'm looking at it, I want one right now. <laughs> when was the last time you had one? Oh, decades probably. Can but I guarantee you, you. Can we film you eating a whole turnip root? Yes, hundred percent. We have to. I'm ex absolutely. I want one tomorrow. I want today. <laughs> Gracie's right. It should have been your regulation sandwich ingredient. It, yeah, it really. Uh, well, we been. hadn't we hadn't had this conversation yet. Were you mad when the next generation of kids got to enjoy Big League Chew as their treat? <laughs> I also got to enjoy Big League Chew. But man, well, I, I mean, too. it's just, it, I don't know what to tell you. This is the boiled peanuts and turnip roots and fucking and shit like that, man. That's what, that's what we had. Yeah. I got to drink with my curly straw. What? Oh. That, that was my, like, if I did something oh. good, I could use a curly straw. <laughs> Right. We well, were we're selling Jeff, a, a straw, I, so I thought you meant that. I thought that was just a really weird declaration. Jeff, I you. take back everything I said about your thing. Yeah. This is yeah. <laughs> I was just really excited by it. That watching all the liquid shoot around all the curves was amazing. Is you must really love the Gerpler straw then? That's what I thought he was talking about. Was the Gerpler straw? No, it was curly straw when he was a kid, and then he fucking got silent. Do you you know we made a Gerpler straw, right? Do you remember that? Is that the one where it goes through the text? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do we sell that already? Straw. Yes. No. Oh. no, it's not out. When he oh didn't all we? I didn't think sudden, it was out. No. All of a sudden he like stops talking, and I get so nervous. I'm like, I, I just wonder if like he passed out. I get like so. Worried. <laughs> no, what is today? Ever... I, for some reason, because I got such <laughs> shite sleep, I can't, <laughs> I can't think while I'm speaking. <laughs> I have to do, do a lot of pre things. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, without an inner monologue, it must be tough. Well, if you want to take some time to load up some thoughts, we can cover for you. Yeah, <laughs> well, I was think just thinking, it. like, I didn't, I don't remember that straw coming out. I don't know that it came out yet. I think it comes out soon. It's hard for me to remember because I got mine in the mail like a month ago. Yeah. So I assumed it had already come and gone, but not out yet. And it made me realize that the the other thing that they could bribe me with to do do well or do nice things was uh, there was a, a playground that had a curly slide. And I think it was just oh, like curly curls. things for me as a kid. How you feel about a curly Ooh. fry? Oh, didn't never had them. I mean, now I to this day. No, I, I've had them <laughs> now, but I just I'm not that fussed. I think the waffle is superior. You, what about? Could I bribe you with a curly straw right now? Uh, I just don't think it works on me anymore. I think I've just I've I've done them. What do you think works on you now? Yeah. That's a good question. Okay, well you think about it. How about we <laughs> ask you another question, uh, Jeff? When did turnip roots die for you? You said decades? I mean, I think probably when I left Alabama. Now, do you ever think that maybe you actually didn't live in animal or, or in Alabama, but lived in a town owned by Tom Nook? Because that's their currency. <laughs> There's a value to turnips and turnip roots. <laughs> I, had, I honestly hadn't considered that or ever made the connection. I think until you need to moment. consider. I think we've given Gavin enough time. What's your response to the question from a minute ago? Well, Gavin? The currency is bells, though. Yeah. Oh, no, but there's the turnip exchange. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, you're on the fly for that one. <laughs> when it comes to shitting on me, you had that in the chamber. <laughs> Billy the Kid over here all of a sudden. <laughs> While this is going so well, allow me to add to it. Uh, I had an, an idea that I kind of pitched to you guys off camera recently, but I want to pitch it formally on camera. We haven't had a draft in a while. The audience has noticed it. People have been asking about mm -hmm. it. We've discussed options for drafts. I think there was the idea that we could maybe do a potato draft out there in the future, which I'm totally amenable to. But I had an idea that uh, I'm really excited about. I think could be a lot of fun. My only worry is this could be... Well, no, I don't think... I'm not even going to express the worry. I'm just going to say, I think that this has a lot of legs. It could be a lot of potential. I want to do an everything draft. Mm-hmm. Where everybody drafts. We have snake draft like we normally do. Yeah. Four slots. And the pool is everything. Yeah. 
<laughs> I like it. Okay. I already have my picks lined up. I'm ready. I'm prepared. You already okay. have four things from th- from everything? Yeah, I do. How have you narrowed it down so much? Well, it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm not living in your brain, first of all. Uh, yeah. Second, <laughs> I think there's some pretty obvious things. Uh-huh. You just need four things out of everything. You don't have a top four everything, Gavin? No, and I'm just tr- I'm remembering now how much I got shat on in the rock draft. I, I <laughs> yeah, can't no, imagine no, you're right. how heavily right, I'll be but... judged at my first pick of the everything draft. I think you're going to do great. I think we're all going to do great. I'm excited for the everything draft. We have a few drafts lined up. We just need. Like, to have I, time I feel to like whoever gets to go first in the everything draft, there's never been more pressure. Yeah, crack rock a number one. <laughs> I I uh, I I have an idea on how to modify this draft to make it a little unique. I wanted to see what you guys thought about it. It, it. If you guys disagree with me, it's totally fine. I'm not like married to this idea at all. It's just an idea for a modifier to the draft. But do I'll you give know my how opinion, as soon as you say it, Gavin will take like 10 minutes, but I'll, I'll Yeah, we'll 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 circle feedback. back to Gavin before we end the episode. Uh <laughs> you know how like when you play games like Rainbow Six Siege and you play in like ranked mode, you can uh eliminate you can vote to eliminate one player that yeah. nobody can pick so like if there's an op player like yeah. javier or whoever that, that always gets used you can you can eliminate that player so it's eliminated from the pool of of people you can pick from what if we all were able to eliminate one item from the from everything so to say like i'm voiding curly fries or whatever and then nobody could pick that one but so that we it's so it's the everything draft minus essentially four things Five things. Interesting. So we just like veto out a bunch of stuff up front. Yeah, you have like everybody gets one veto okay. from yeah. from the pool of everything out the gate. So are the just to clarify, I like the idea, uh, but just to clarify the, the everything it. pool, it doesn't have to necessarily be a a thing, right? Like an item. Like I it's everything. Yeah, it's, it's, everything. Yeah, it's everything. So it's every, everything. you can everything is draft eligible in this pool. Yeah, you could Got you it. could yeah, be yeah, like everything. I'm vetoing blue. Sweet. Okay. That's, I just wanted to make sure about that. Yeah. I, would, I recently had a thing, and I don't know if this is just my own specific interest, I think it would be fun to do a fictional band draft. There are a lot okay. of great fictional bands. So like Chain Drive from Lost, like that kind of thing? Spinal drive Tap, shaft. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Any fictional <laughs> band. What do you say, Gavin? I was just laughing at Chain Drive. Is yeah, that what they were called? Shaft. No. Drive, drive shaft, shaft. chain drive, <laughs> yeah. drive shaft. That's how stupid. Who cares? It wasn't even real. <laughs> chain drive's a better name than drive shaft. Is it? No, I don't think so. But I, <laughs> no. it's fine for you to think that. <laughs> I already said no. Oh, I'm not sure. I could even. Can I name four fictional bands? Is there not a fictional band in a James Bond movie? You can't name four of everything that you like. There's no way you can name four <laughs> specific fictional bands right now. You can't. Get out of here. You can't. When you anything can't. is pickable, you Dude. couldn't think of four things. Yeah, you right? Like, the bands thing is so easy. This is nuts. <gasps> oh. Like Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah. The California Jim and the Raisins. Holograms. The California Dr. Raisins. Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Ooh, Otis Day and the Nights. Yeah. Otis Day and the Nights is a good one. Oh, uh, Zach Attack. Uh, the Blues Brothers. Soggy Bottom Boys. This is great. And see, of... I think it could be fun. Yep. I think Gavin, it's you going to throw idea. any in there? You got an idea or what? Yeah, I just threw in Zach Attack. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. So you got one, buddy. Way to go. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Misty Mountain Gaming offers free shipping to the entire United States and now has new affordable shipping rates for international shoppers, which is fantastic. As an international shopper, I always love to see that. Uh, Misty Mountain is the only dice company that offers a lifetime warranty on all dice sets, including stone and glass, which are beautiful, beautiful dice to have. Love stone and glass dice. And they have their annual Black Friday buy two, get one free dice set deal coming up only valid the week of Black Friday. The only premium dice company that offers this deal. New dice sets monthly, plus the biggest selection on the web. Tons of other gaming accessories, including leather bags, leather books, dice trays, miniatures, and more. That's so cool. Love that. 
Our friends at Misty Mountain have an exclusive offer for our listeners. Just go to MistyMountainGaming.com and use code FACE for a free acrylic dice set of your choice when you spend $20 or more. So once again, that is go to MistyMountainGaming.com and use code FACE for a free acrylic dice set of your choice when you spend $20 or more. In comedy, you have some iconic duos that really, without each other, you know, uh, who knows what they would have even been. I mean, I'm thinking of, like, Laurel and Hardy, uh, Cheech and Chong, or, you know, like, uh, Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. They were the perfect setup punchline duo. They nailed it every time. But what's the perfect duo when it comes to growing your business? That's you and Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all in one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. And I mean, for us, you know, it's selling all sorts of ridiculous things like waffle makers to grown tubes. It's just whatever your business is, they got you. And Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with internet based converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI powered all star. Now, what I love about Shopify is no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control of your business to take it to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash face, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash face now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash face. Do you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts this holiday season with nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. With Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. It can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. Too busy with holiday plants to cook? I mean, the holiday season is so busy, it's always difficult to find time to cook, but with Factor, you're going to make sure you're eating well. You can skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh and never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. When you're too busy running around to plan lunch, Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go, no microwave required. This November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com face50 and use code face50 to get 50% off. That's code face50 at factormeals.com slash face50 to get 50% off. When we did the Halo Let's Play that Eric watched, he was doing commentary like that to me in a genuine way, but it felt (laughs) so facetious because I'm used to this. I can understand how it would feel undercutting. However, I was very much on your side and trying to read you on, but I get it. (laughs) It It was very jarring. I don't know how to handle Eric's positivity. Uh-uh. <laughs> it, it, it I never you feels genuine. It feels it feels a little weird. Uh huh. Like it's a, it's like uh, it's off putting coming from you. <laughs> Thanks, man. It is. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, but it's nice. It's a no, nice it's surprise a, when it does. Much happen. appreciated. When I it just happens. wanted to see you win in Halo ranked. Uh, you know, play yeah. four games and then play five games and then all of them were in the wrong setting. So it's fine. <laughs> And I, I need to thank you because uh, we haven't talked about this, but I feel like uh, it, it was just a, an established thing. After we did the wax episode, we did mm-hmm. a recording. 
and uh, it it went in a way where it was it was supposed to be against you but it, really i was the one that was suffering the most uh -huh. and i also <laughs> was just destroyed from the waxing process and you everyone allowed me to end that recording where you guys could have easily dragged that on for longer oh yeah and i would have just been stuck so i just i i feel like i owe you <laughs> I you had it. you had already taken one for the team that day. We didn't want to. I had. Death. That was that was a crazy experience, and I hope that when you guys get your buttholes waxed, <laughs> it's not nearly as bad. I like it broke me. The pain sucked, <laughs> but it. I was like, I think so, because I've never been waxed before, and I figured if I try it once, then I'll know what it feels like, and that actually might be worse than not knowing what the experience is going to be. So I was kind of dreading it the entire time, and I think when I got it over with, it was like an adrenaline dump, and I was just done for hours. Like I was, and you just so went for exhausted. it too. You didn't piss about. No, yeah, it was uh, an experience that I cannot wait to see the results of what you guys do. And uh, Eric made sure that that image was seen by everyone. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I made, sure, I made sure Gracie saw it too. I didn't want her to feel left out. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, well, yeah, the next day, Gracie reached out to me and asked, am I okay with that image being used on socials? And that was a real, like, I didn't, I didn't have my pubes on the internet on my bingo card. That's maybe going to be in the expansion for Sloppy Jizz Bingo. Uh, but we're here. We're doing it. Oh, so it. you approved it? Yeah, absolutely I did. <laughs> oh my God. That's it insane, dude. It wasn't a question of like, Oh, really? Like, it wasn't even a debate of if I should. It was just more like I had to take a moment to be like, what a weird thing this all is. <laughs> Did not anticipate that. I actually spooked myself recently. <laughs> this is really funny. I forgot that I put it in my desk drawer, the wax strip. I still oh have it. God. Oh, and come I, on. <laughs> I, w <laughs> I just, like, in the time, like, I was in so much pain, I just put it somewhere. And that's where I put it. And so, like, the other day, I went to see if I had some double A's in my desk, and I opened the drawer, and it was just the first thing I saw, and it was, it, it freaked me out. It was genuinely unnerving. Like, oh my god, that's so gross. Just, ugh. Terrible. I never want to see it again. Are you planning on keeping it for a while? Well, it's like, it's a weird thing where I don't want to, but also, like, what about the museum? We have, <laughs> there's a place for relics. We're All doing right, training cards. Oh, you're right, you're right. You're right. We're doing chase cards potentially with trading oh, cards. So like, oh, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Could be pube cards. I don't know. I'm not saying that that's a great idea, but like, it just. I feel and like anything we do at this show, it's a mistake to throw away because you just never know. Are you allowed to mail pube? Well, we're we're not allowed to mail dirt, but I think pubes <laughs> are okay. Have y'all seen those pube <laughs> sunglasses? No. no. What? Uh, yeah. Let me see if I can find. Them. Yeah, there they are. Penelope's pubes. Hold on. Uh, why do I know about this? Why do you know? About this? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so they made a pair of glasses, and inside the plastic is just uh, around the rims is just pubes. Oh, oh no! I opened it. Oh no! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Only four hundred thirty-two dollars. Wow. Custom designed acetate with wire frame core sunglasses. Acetate has also been custom made and contains Penelope Gazin's actual pubes. Okay. <laughs> Engraved on gold on both sides says fashion brand sunglasses for eyes. Whose birthday's coming up next? <laughs> I'm not till next summer. Yeah, I'm not till spring, so it's got to be Nick. Huh? Nick, when were you born? Penelope Gazin. December. Yeah! Oh. Pube sunglasses for Nick. No, please. Ha God, happy no. birthday, Nick. <laughs> yeah, what other, what other things can you put pubes in? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I suppose the possibilities are endless. <laughs> yeah. Can we make yeah. the publer? Uh, the ooh. publer? What is What's the publer? What's a publer? A girl with pubes in? Oh, God. Oh. It's not no, in I the cup, think... though. It's just in the cup. <laughs> I don't think any of this is a good idea. Yeah, I'm you don't Andrew. think we should have one limited edition pubula? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I think no. it's one of those things that, like, in your head is great, and then when <laughs> it exists, you go, "Oh yeah, this is exactly what I described, and this is horrifying." <laughs> now that it's real, mm -hmm. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea at one point. <laughs> the pubular. 
Oh. Gavin, I'm I'm more open to the idea than the other guys are. Who's Just sourcing the pubes? I mean, we've we've done pube stuff before. Ga Gavin and I have are, have gone deep on pubes. We, we yeah we, yeah uh, our pubes it's, have it's not been off to us. Yeah, we're not we're not afraid of pubes. Hey, you guys uh you guys like hot dogs, right? Big time. <laughs> Not after, after talking the about pubes. pubes. Yeah, right after yeah. the pube conversation, no. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to <laughs> pivot away from pubes into something more pleasant. Have you guys okay. seen this video? It's been out for a while. You probably have seen it. It's a, a guy who called, created something called the Hot Dog Run, and he took like a, like a Hot Wheels car track from the second floor of his house, and it goes all the way down <laughs> to the first floor, then out the window. You can watch the video. <laughs> and then it, it, it <laughs> jumps going? up into the air, and then the hot dog lands on a grill, and then they cook it. Wow. And basically, what they did was they took the hot dog, and they put it on, like, uh, Lego wheels, like, stuck it on Lego wheels, and, and then it just goes down this track. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was so cool and it's so clever. awesome. It got me thinking, you know how they do, uh, like when you were a kid, you would do soapbox derby races. Like when I was in the Cub uh -huh. Scouts, we would do it all the time. You get a little block of wood and then you have to turn it into a car. What if we did hot dog races where we put, we all get the same Lego, like regulation Lego wheels, and then we put our hot dog on it and then we can shape our hot dog or put attachments on it like Mr. Potato Head style to make it <laughs> as aerodynamic as possible. And then we have hot dog races to see who's the fastest hot dog racer. And that's like a new sport we do. I love it. I like yeah, that a lot. I'm already thinking of the mods. Yeah, exactly, right? You put a pair of wings on that sucker, it'll fly. And then, <laughs> at the end, we eat the hot dogs as the reward. That sounds great. I'm, I'm looking at this hot dog tra track, and I'm imagining if Gavin's parents could bribe him with a curly straw to do his chores, if this was an option that he could have, the hot dog, mm. like cooking a dog in there, I, I bet you his parents could get him to kill somebody. I bet you there's nothing Gavin would do for a hot dog launch what if we put a loop in the track and then gavin can like it's the best of every world for gav <laughs> well what if oh we put God. a bunch of loops in and then like two heating elements and potentially it could get cooked on, on oh, the on like the on the way down that's yeah. another oh. great idea so there's so much we can do with this heated tracks maybe mm. <laughs> Like, what other race exists on Earth where at the end of the race they eat the car? Yeah, that's a great point. You know, like the Fast and Furious movies, they love to jump from one car to another. There uh -huh. could be yeah. something where, like, a bun is moving at an equal speed and the dog has to launch somehow from the, the one to the bun. Could you make dueling tracks and put the bun down one track and the hot dog down the other, and then they jump and combine in the air? Oh, I'm also imagining like, you know, in a car wash, you get those spinning brushes. Uh-huh. Oh. I'm imagining one on each side, one with ketchup, one with mayo. Yes, and then one with, yes. with uh, mustard. Oh, mustard. Man. Yeah, like a mustard brush. That's a great yeah. idea. Like there's I mean, so much we can do with this. <laughs> While we're like just living in this Willy Wonka world of hot dogs, what if like it <laughs> launched on a slip and slide of ketchup or like other condiments? Oh, like the, oh. that's like with don't need wheels. You, you're just on the lube. Of yeah, like, like it, it launches mean, it. off one thing and then... <laughs> like a luge, almost. Yes. yes. Yeah, I like this idea. Like, we have, like, the dry track, and then we also have, like, it's like, you know, the theme park version, or, like, the racetrack version, but then we also have, like, <laughs> the Schlitterbahn version, where yes. you're going down... Like, yeah, 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 this is or really like good. Or, like, a Plinko for flavor. <laughs> like, there's different <laughs> things you can bounce off of in different oh, areas on the track like completely different random. Condiments. Which yeah. flavors like what, it hits on the way down? Like yeah, what in, exactly. Oh, yeah, this is we've we've created like a whole theme park around hot dogs. This yeah. is awesome, dude. Deciding it, your flavor by Plinko is the is the best idea you've <laughs> ever had. That's a really low bar. That might be like up there with Jeff calling me Russell Hans. I appreciate. Oh, it. You think that's, that's an not, insult? Yeah, it's not great. Oh, <laughs> what's not great? Saying that that's the best idea I've ever had. It's a fun idea. I don't it's a think great that's idea. Don't sell yourself idea. short. And also, don't be so negative to Russell Hands. He changed the game by himself. Probably single-handedly more influential in Survivor than anybody else. I don't know about that, but also, like, he's scamming people in fantasy football leagues now. Like, he's not, not <laughs> a good guy. I didn't say he was a good guy. I said he was an important guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd rather be a good guy than an important guy. That's fair. 
I I re- I respect that too. But I along with Gavin, I think it's a really I think you're selling your own idea short. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea. What if hmm, I'm really thinking about this now? You don't really get flavor for bouncing off bacon. I was thinking like the pegs could be like bacon wrap, but that doesn't really do anything. What could be a thing? What could what what could we add to this? It can't just be condiment. There has to be a way to get like cheese potentially in the mix. Onion. Onion. Yeah. It's classic yeah. hot dog. We'll have to do some we'll have to do some testing. Eric, we're gonna need a lot of Hot Wheels tracks. We're gonna need some sort of a Plinko <laughs> device. Well, All right, yeah. I'll we're gonna need a bunch of hot dogs. Sort of a Plinko device. You got it. Once we do the face and leg board, you could just convert that to the Plinko board. Oh yeah, it could be a part of the it could be a component, yeah. Yeah, and then do you think we could cook the hot dog as it goes down the device? Like like we were going to do with the track? Like like it heat it gets heated down as it goes down the Plinko device? Uh, yeah, I think we could fit, we could definitely warm it. I mean, that's all you're doing actually, isn't it, with a hot dog? That'd be an awesome restaurant to go to. You just like put in $5 to order a hot dog <laughs> and then whatever comes down the Plinko device is the hot dog you get. <laughs> I feel like that's a dangerous game. Well, not if you control the ingredients. Well, yeah. But it, you just said you couldn't, right? It'd be a random. Well, I mean, dog. you control. Well, I mean, you, you being us, the people that are inventing this device, we can control I the see. ingredients we put in. I, it, you know, I also don't think you could be fussy if you're eating at this establishment. That's, That's true. true. Yeah, that's very true. true. Like, what kind of hot dog wouldn't you want? Oh, um, it's a relish. S- I don't want any relish related? on my dog. Yeah, I don't want fish. I mean, Jeff doesn't want mayo. I don't want mayo on my hot dog. <laughs> Is it just going to be fish in this machine? Right. I, don't I don't know, know where we're, we're picking the ingredients. For the hot dog thing, but all right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah no, like, hey, I don't wanna... hey, guys, I'll make my solemn vow. No fish. Thank you. I wouldn't want an oyster on my hot dog, but I just yeah. don't know why that would You're be one on it. You're acting like um, this is a ridiculous Gravel. Thing, but... I don't want gravel on my hot dog. <laughs> Nick, um, Nick just showed us fat burger. That's hot true. dog. Fish hot dog feels like a product they sell in the dark room. <laughs> Oh, Nick's Nick's insane uh, dark yeah. dark no. sandwich or whatever. They never went yeah, this <laughs> fat. I mean, are there fish dogs? Yeah. Oh, you know it'd be good. There are surrounding yeah. a yeah. hot dog and onion rings. So what? it's a thing. It's a thing in a place called Wiener Schnitzel, and they call it the Sea Dog. And it is a <laughs> <laughs> Garrett Hunter from Mega Sixty Four is the only person that I know that gets this. And he gets it every time. They Unironically? Bring it back. Yeah, no, he loves this thing. It yeah. is. It's like a big ash. It like, like like a big like fish stick thing. But they put it in a hot dog bun with hot dog condiments and everything. It's like a fish hot dog. <laughs> yeah. Here's one called a a sea dog. Yeah. The, the sea dog. That's what he gets. He gets the yeah. sea dog. He's an insane person. He's crazy. Yeah. I don't want yeah. that. Okay. Uh, again, that. again, my solemn vow is no fish. Okay. That looks what like going Andrew. On you just doesn't that Andrew, look you great? just said something that looks like Nick made it in the dark again. <laughs> yeah, I did, but I just that, had that thought. Uh, has food ever looked more like sex than that? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh yeah, that's sex in a bun, dude. That's my kind of sex too. That is that <laughs> those, looks good. Those onion rings are you pre wax? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shredded cheese, Gavin. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but I would definitely eat that. So you would prefer it instead of the shredded cheese melted on top of the hot dog that's currently fucking uh, <laughs> the onion rings. Jesus well, I didn't even think you about that. Would, as well you for would our prefer track. like you would prefer like a solid slap of cheese on top of that. I would. Okay, oh, that's fair. But that's I totally think there's fair. definitely an opportunity for the uh, for the the Hot Wheels track to have the whole thing go through an onion ring. Oh, I think it's a great oh. idea. That's a great idea. Huh. So we yeah. have a lot to work with here. Uh, we have a lot of directions we can go. The least of which, like the the beta, like the 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 bare minimum, is that we race hot dogs, and then we can get very creative from there in the terms of how we turn those hot dogs into food and if we plinko them. Uh, but I, I really feel like that that that's some solid supplemental content uh, potential there. I'm very excited. <laughs> Eric, is this uh, delegatable, or do you think you'll have to handle this yourself? Oh no, this is delegatable for sure. Gracie's already taking notes, so we're good. Excellent. I wonder if you could fire a hot dog out of a blowgun. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Hot dog I've got, I've got really a gun funny. that would fire a hot dog. You have a hot dog gun? Well, I got an air cannon that well, is yeah, probably just... the diameter of a hot dog. That's, oh, you got to try that. Could you shoot it into my mouth? 
It, it, I think it comes out at like 400 miles an hour. <laughs> so, you might, so, so what if I stand really far back? Oh, well, we should definitely do this. You know what I mean? What? Like if I stand far enough backward, the it will lose <laughs> velocity if, by the time it gets. What if you, you put the bun in your mouth as a crash pad for the dog? I think that's a great idea. How yeah. far could we send a dog? Do you think at four hundred miles we, an hour? Could we send it over stage four? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah, and then uh, yeah, and then you either catch it in your mouth or maybe we catch it in a bun. Yeah. Or put the bun in my mouth and catch it. Either way, I'm I, I'm I'm prepared to do this. I'm I'm in, what about what about if you have an onion ring in your mouth and I'll fire it through that? Okay. Over stage four. I think I think boys. I think we might be ushering in uh, the era of the hot dog podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's there's some solid potential there. I mean, we were sandwiches last week. Well, we haven't even made that sandwich yet. We need to do that. That's another great piece of supplemental. Man, we're racking up the supplemental. I was going to mention think... that we we still need to watch that Blast movie and do a watch. Yeah. Movie. If we're going to do yeah, that. We do. We, I feel like we really need to watch Stay Tuned as well, yeah. now that we mentioned it in the previous episode. Oh, definitely. I just feel like we're really getting into our engineering phase. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Maybe it's an engineering podcast. Ooh. I'm trying to engineer my head how you could do like a catcher's mitt with hot dog buns. As like the way to try to catch the dog that's been launched. Oh, I'm sure we like, could do that. It, like a finger in each bun. Oh. Like what? How does that? Wait. So your fingers are the dogs? N well, like you have to catch it with your hand, which is a hot dog bun. I'm trying to. I don't know how to make this work, but there's something there. Yeah, we'll figure it. We got a lot of potential here. The, the fucking hot dog options are endless, man. I mainly, to be honest, just want to see you get hit in the face with a hot dog at a high speed. <laughs> like, that alone is hilarious. I'm down for that, but I mostly just want to beat you guys in a hot dog race. <laughs> I will let you beat me in countless hot dog races if it means that you get hit in the face with a hot dog Dude. that's launched from a cannon. Can I bring my compressed air cannon to the hot dog race? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> as long as I get to eat a hot dog, I'm happy. I would love, I would love just a, a profile shot. A little bit of slow mo of Jeff's <laughs> hot dog on wheels just going from left to right, and then my hot dog just goes sailing over the top. <laughs> like, like the eight NOS. times the speed. <laughs> I'm. Oh. When I think of like the most menacing characters in film history, I think of Anton Chigurh and his fucking air canister that he'd walk around and chew things with. Imagining he's launching hot dogs out of that thing <laughs> is so funny to me. Just holding a hot dog to a guy's just, forehead. Just <laughs> blasting it through. <laughs> <laughs> he blows out the door, the, the, the doorknob or whatever, and then a fucking hot dog goes through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need to get my my hot dog can into a more portable size. I think. <laughs> oh. oh, this is awesome! Yeah. Oh God, great episode. We need more time to like do all this. We need some office days. That's what I was saying to Jeff. I think we need to add a second office day for Let's Play and Supplemental. Yeah, I think Andrew's much. right. I mean, here it is right now. We have two watch-alongs. We have a whole a cavalcade of hot dog-related content to do. We have uh, e eating sandwiches in the dark. We have uh, <laughs> two drafts, at least, that we could do. There's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot to film. Well, this is exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's just in, in just in time for you to be unavailable for <laughs> a week and a half. Two weeks? Just, and then just, a, just a week and a half. Oh, just a week and a half. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just a week and a half. That's good. Well, we can do some supplemental next week, the beginning of next week. You want to do, what are you doing Tuesday? What are we up uh, to? Tuesday afternoon, I'm getting like a, I'm getting like a, my beard and stuff ready, trimmed up for the wedding, but I can do anything day? Tuesday morning or day. Well, I said the afternoon, dude. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I have the morning in it. Uh, I have up to like 2 p.m. that I'm free that, to throw hot dogs or watch I mean, movies. I mean, hot dogs aren't really a breakfast food, but I mean, we can try, I guess. Whatever. We could do butthole in the morning. Yeah, I could do butthole in the morning and beer in the afternoon. No, I'm, great. I'm trying. I'm trying to get this person to. And then in. sandwiches at night. Yeah. Yeah. And then sandwiches at night. <laughs> I only eat my tomatoes in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you not like about just a nice slice of tomato? 
It's, it's too liquidy, too juicy. I understand. But then I'm ketchup is the... so liquidy. Yeah, but it's sugary. <laughs> oh, add salt to it from Nick. Yeah. Good suggestion. Oh, yeah. It's sweet. Well, Andrew, let me let me make this solemn promise to you. Uh, throughout the duration of our, the, the remaining duration of our friendship, which I hope is long and fruitful, I promise to eat all of your tomatoes. Thanks, Anytime Dennis? you get a tomato that you don't want, you just go. Oh, okay. I thought you were like enlisting me to start growing tomatoes. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, if we're ever hanging out and you you get a tomato on your regulation sandwich and you want to unregulate it, I'll eat that. I'll take that tomato bullet for you. I mean, you don't have to. You're welcome. I'm to. happy to, dude. I love tomatoes and okay, I don't want to well, see tomatoes yeah. waste. That's I can eat them like an apple. Dude, I already. Well, first off, I already called dibs on his tomatoes. And okay. B, you can eat a tomato like an apple while I'm eating a turnip root like a turnip root. <laughs> <laughs> That's another piece of supplemental content. We got to eat apples yeah. and turnip or <laughs> tomatoes and turnip roots. What happened to the fruit throw? Uh, it's around, right? Okay. I don't. I think I don't know. I just don't know what won. Oh, I'm curious. Oh yeah, won. I've just been busy editing my actual work. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> That's more than fair. Um, I should have. A free bit of time at the weekend, so I could just whip that up. I've, I also want to do the the Jackhammer video. Oh, very excited about that. A lot of supplemental coming your way. Yeah. A lot and of you good can support stuff. us directly by going to facepod.com slash first and signing up. That's how you sell that. That's And now people know. Tomatoes, uh, I always just think of TPG when I think of tomatoes. And uh, I want to share a text that he sent me. He was talking oh. to me about Jack. Uh, he was talking to me about Reacher, the show, asking mm. me if I watched it. And um, this was his text, his little review. <laughs> Can you read that out loud, Gavin? <laughs> <laughs> Fuegismo show. <laughs> it's like a cheesy AT action movie as a show. Machete fights, Desert Eagles, Babes, the whole joint. But <laughs> Fuegismo... <laughs> <laughs> is that meant to be like Fuegismo or like Fuegismo is is the intent? I don't know. Either way, I've never seen that word, uh, and I just loved it, and I just want to start using it for everything. I love it. Fu uh, Fuegismo. <laughs> Fuegismo. Oh my god! <laughs> but now I'm going to watch Reacher. I think this episode was Fuegismo. Yeah, we came oh, up definitely. with a lot of hot dog stuff. There were Andrew's been in a bathtub the whole time. Um, <laughs> I'm so cozy. Yeah. Like, I, have, I have a great way to end it. Okay. Ooh. This is something I've been wanting to ask you guys for a long time, and I think I've actually asked Eric uh, off camera from, uh, during other podcasts. But uh, Oh, and we should even talk. Andrew, you and I had an idea that to revolutionize spoons that we can get into next week. What? But, uh, what? We had a whole conversation this morning about how, how to revolution, revolutionize the spoon industry, and I'm really excited. You can't about, leave but, us on that cliffhanger? Oh, no, yeah, we have to leave it on that. I love that yeah. cliffhanger. I can't oh, but here, wow. Here's here's uh here's my question for y'all. What if you had an intro song? What would it be? Like for instance, anytime you walked into a room, like you walk into Rooster Teeth to go to work for uh for a supplemental day or for an office day, and when you walk into the office, the new face office which exists now and that I've been spending a lot of time in and I love. Uh you walk in, it's playing a, a song to introduce that you're there. What is your intro song? Uh, I don't have a good one for me. I have a good one for Johnny Caviar. What's oh. Johnny Caviar's? Wasn't me by Shaggy. <laughs> nice. That's perfect. <laughs> like, you think about it, like, <laughs> I was, what? <laughs> I don't know if it, 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 in, in this scenario, in my head, it magically plays in the background, but it would be funny if your friends had to hum it or sing it to you when they saw you the first time. But, uh... I, like, I feel like I know dead set what mine would be, but like, Eric, I, I think you had one when we talked. What was your intro song? My song would be Bad to the Bone. This is yeah. even better <laughs> if... It, so I just love the riff at the beginning, and now I'm thinking if it plays wherever I'm at, cool. Yeah. If it like, doesn't and you have to sing it to me, even better. If I right. walk into a room and it goes, da 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 awesome. <laughs> Fucking great. <laughs> I think that is the perfect intro song for you. That is the vibe when Eric walks into a room. Gavin, Gavin. <laughs> Gavin what the fuck is this? Uh, give that a little listen. All right. Listen to this All real right. fast. Uh, oh, wow. Can we play this? 
uh, on the episode? Um, I guess. Yeah, you know what? We're talking over it. Let's just do it. It is. Oh, quite you on the legal. countdown? They're counting down. What is this? This is Blobby. This is Mr. Blobby, right? Yeah, wow. Gavin. The fuck? <laughs> what? It really gets going after like 20 seconds. Yes, it does. <laughs> oh, this I don't actually, like this. I this is this. what I imagine how Gavin's inner monologue works. <laughs> oh no, they think. Yeah, uh, that was actually, I think, like a number one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In what? In what? <laughs> yeah, number one in what? Like the number one song in England. Oh no. Oh. Like the Christmas number one. <laughs> oh no. Top, top oh. the charts. <laughs> yeah, I want to come into that. I think oh. that is. <laughs> That is the perfect, the perfect song for you, Gavin. That is psycho. psycho like I'm shit. already imagining what my arms are gonna be doing as I'm walking down the corridor. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <gonna> be jolly. <laughs> I, dude, I love it. I think, I think Eric nailed his. I think you've nailed yours. I think Johnny Caviar's makes a ton of sense. Do you have uh, any idea for one, Nick? Uh, okay. Nick is gone. Nick, what? Nick what? heard that this song went to number one and fucking passed out. <laughs> he he, he, he got got caught a case of Gavin. Gavin. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was getting into the lyrics there. Okay, still doesn't. What's your answer? What the <laughs> fuck is going on in this? What's happening, <laughs> guys? 182 of these, not yeah. difficult. Don't know <laughs> what's no. happening in this one. <laughs> Blobby, I, he took over. It's not hard for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is your answer still awesome not giving an answer? What's going on? <laughs> what's the question? <laughs> what would be your song? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking answer a song. <laughs> This sucks. <laughs> just never... You missed the question, and we're all just like, "Well, well." Eric, like in, I'm Nick, so upset. Nick's I'm intro bad. song, Eric. Nick's intro intro song would just be, it would just be Beetlejuice going, "Who me?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is. What the fuck? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if mine. I was pretty happy with mine. I think mine like perfectly <laughs> it summarizes me. But I don't know if it's as good as Gavin's fits him. But this would be mine. Uh, it would be in the summertime by oh, Mungo nice. Jerry. Yeah, that's great. Uh, let me oh, play some great. of this. Yeah, it's awesome. like take a drive. That's one of those songs that like is such a fun, lighthearted summer vibe, and then you listen to the lyrics and it's oh, so much darker than you. Terrible had to lyrics. Say. Yeah, don't pay don't pay attention to the lyrics. The lyrics are not great, but the vibe is all yep. is awesome. So I've never paid attention to the lyrics. You yeah. don't need oh, to. Oh, they're yeah, bad. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a it's a great song. Good pick. Um I want to film us all walk into the building it's to these idea. with our yeah right yep yeah because we'd all have a little different jaunt yeah that's, I like that uh, that's another Jeff, great, another piece of supplemental uh, yeah. mm. well we need to keep making it to stick our wax face on the front of we need, yeah. we if, need content uh, to put I'm gonna say this too if Nick doesn't come up with one in about eight seconds we're gonna come up with them for him no don't do it Gracie said no one asked but mine would be Margarita oh that's a great thing. <laughs> I feel like I feel like mine would be Sultans of Swing. Oh, that's a good one. I love okay. that song. All right, all right. Beep, Sultans beep. of Swing. That's a great song. Margaritaville is a fantastic song, Gracie, Absolutely. and it uh, it definitely. You know, Gracie, did you know that Margaritaville was written in Austin, Texas? I didn't. Yeah. yeah. Did you know yeah. we went to the Margaritaville in Key West, and it was like having a panic attack, but surrounded by fake parrots? Oh and my god. It, oh. That place was insane. Loudest place I've ever been on earth. Absolutely. They're awesome. 100%. Fucking Absolutely terrible. insane. But yeah, uh, Jimmy Buffett apparently wrote uh, Wasting Away in Margaritaville at a bar restaurant on Anderson that's no longer there. And then he uh, was having like a goodbye breakfast before he went to the airport. And then he went to the airport and flew back to Key West and then finished it there. So. That's our local connection to Margaritaville. When he died, the uh, the duplex that he st had stayed in when he wrote the Margaritaville song, I guess, is known. And a bunch of people came and put salt and salt shakers 
in front of the duplex as like a like a door like Jim Morrison style homage to him. Man, we didn't even get to a Halloween night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, that'll be that'll have to be next time because we got to wrap this thing up for sure. Next time will be middle of December. I don't think we'll (laughs) probably get to it. (laughs) All right, we'll get to it next October. (laughs) We hung out for Halloween and it was fun. There you go. Well, it was almost a disaster. Oh, no. (laughs) Burn Dog saved some kid's life. Yeah, but we have to save it for the next episode. Andrew, what happened? The episode. Oh. What happened? What? Electronics fire. Is he dr- drowning? Andrew, what happened? Are you there? Andrew? He I didn't oh, what did he, he drop his laptop in the water? No. What's going on? I think maybe he listened to Summertime by Mongo Jerry and got too excited. <laughs> Andrew? Oh, God, no. Oh, oh be on the man. lookout for a text from Andrew in the next 10 to minutes. And, and well, we'll he was recording you know on that, though, wasn't he? That he sure laptop? was. I hope he doesn't. Did he drown his audio? Did he approve? Did he say, did he give approval that if he died in this episode that we could still play it? Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I think he did. Uh, Shit. Uh, yeah. I did. Yeah, he it was said implied. Yes. It was implied. Yeah. I think it was implied. Okay. Great. Well, well, thanks for listening to another episode of the Face Podcast. This was the Turk 182 edition. Uh, hopefully, Andrew is still alive and with us. Andrew? I'm still here. Okay, what, happened? what happened? I was trying to just, it was getting a little cold in here, so I, w- I went to turn the hot water on. I accidentally hit the shower button. <laughs> and I got blasted. <laughs> oh, God. You got a soggy mic? Oh, no, I threw everything away from me. <laughs> but I'm drenched. <laughs> I don't know what I gotta throw my blanket in the dryer. It's fuck. It's, bad, it's a bad scene. <laughs> yeah, end this thing. This is insane. Oh man, tell a friend about this podcast, please, won't you? Uh, or I'm gonna tell a friend about you. Hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. He wouldn't do that, would he? Who has the sloppy mouth? Do it for Elon. Going the distance in the bathroom. What's the best Halloween costume? And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs> <laughs>